You're holding a blitz ball, and I pick this baseball up with my right hand. Well, you're the baseball player. And it feels foreign in my right hand a little bit. Switch? But No, that's okay. That's okay. Look at that scuff. Bartolo, Bartolo Colon, with this huge scuff in this baseball, could make the ball move an extra eight inches on his like little run. Were you a scuffer? No. Nope. Really? Nope. I tried, and I don't like anything unpredictable. So, like, when I'd get a ball back that had a scuff in it, like, from the field, I'd be like, no. Because I tried to use it. I, You know, you try to anything that you can come your way that's legal. Yeah. And the, if they didn't change the ball out, it's not like I'm forcefully scuffing it. I just don't like to do anything that I don't know exactly what it's going to do. Mm. So, if it's going to move this much and there's a possibility, if I'm trying to throw it inside, I don't want to hit anybody. Anyway. You know who might be a scuffer? Maybe not. <laughs> Taiwan Walker, the subject of today's player profile and projection brought to you by Shea Station. Uh, this one's going to be an interesting one. There's a lot to talk about about our friend Taiwan. Recent news, news from last season, and what to look forward to uh, in this season. Taiwan is an interesting case because the rotation has been expanded with the addition of Chris Bassett. And there's a lot of other depth around him. So Taiwan presumably has a spot right now, but actually we got an injury update on Taiwan Walker pretty recently. Yeah, he had uh, knee debridement surgery in the offseason, which uh, isn't terrible, but it's also not great, obviously. Right. Uh, debridement just means that instead of reconstruction or anything, they're going in and they're taking out like the deteriorated chunks that are causing pain, and uh, hopefully it, it creates a smoother process for him to use his knee. Um, just, just a pain alleviation kind of method, uh, but still not great. It's, they said that he's still behind all the other starters right. one to two weeks which means probably two weeks just because you don't want to be too optimistic and too forceful coming into the season. Right, so we might not see Taiwan Walker by opening day, but it's safe to assume that he will be a part of this rotation going forward into the 2022 season. Yeah, that forces him into the fifth spot. Right. So that you have DeGrom, Scherzer, Chris Bassett. Welcome. Uh, and then you have Cookie Carrasco, whose you know, reports are all positive. Uh, that puts him into the fifth spot, and you wouldn't need the fifth spot for a while because of all the off days, because of weather and opening day, all those things. So yeah. um, you wouldn't even need him for a while. So I don't think he'll miss any normal starts, but I think it just slows his process down. And I think that um, oh, I want Taiwan Walker at 100%. Yes. Because I think we in last season we had 100% of Taiwan Walker in the first half. He was an all-star, had a great sensational, great season, and then things just fell apart in the second half once we got to Pittsburgh. Yeah, I think that was that's kind of the gist of everything. He was two separate pitchers, whether it's first half and second half or even month to month. He was either lights out and an absolute all-star and dominant, or he was not very good and gave up a ton of home runs, uh, which we'll cover. But I wanted to kind of talk about uh, his season as a whole. We'll take a snapshot. So last year, Taiwan Walker in 30 games, 29 starts. He had a 4.47 ERA or a 4.47 ERA, 7 wins, 11 losses through 159 innings, which is his second highest total uh in his whole career. Right. He had 133 hits. Uh he gave up 26 home runs, which is enormous amount in that short. Had 146 strikeouts, um a FIP of 4.57, which is right in line with his actual ERA. And a very good, very respectable whip of 1.182. That's the uh, that's the exclamation point here for me because I feel like a 1.18 whip does not translate to the rest of the numbers Correct. that you just read off. But it's all about this second half. And you mentioned the home run total, and that, I think, is the biggest thing here. It, it changed everything for Taiwan. In the first half, only six home runs allowed. In the second half, 20 home runs allowed over 13 games, which is extremely alarming. That is a big difference. And that was, a, the, if you were watching closely, he had this amazing fastball the whole first half. This yeah. fastball that was getting swings and misses in the zone. And it, he was able to throw it in all counts. It didn't really matter. He just had this extra zip on his fastball. In the second half, he tried to go with that fastball for a long time, and it just wasn't there. And the long ball was... The, the main culprit after him pushing to try to push through it. Yeah. He didn't make the adjustment, and he wasn't getting the same results, and the ball just kept leaving the ballpark. Perhaps the most wild Taiwan Walker stat I can give our audience is that in the second half in his entire career, he has given up 48 home runs. 20 of those were just last season. So this was a 
extremity, if you yep. will. And I, I don't know if it was a stamina-based thing because, as you mentioned before, Ty went through 159 innings. That's the second most in his career. It was the first time that he got above 150 since 2017. It's been a tumultuous road for Taiwan Walker that led him to New York. Three games started in 20, uh, 2018, just one in 2019, and then 11 in 2020, which was his great year that he turned into a nice contract with the Mets. And, I mean, that first half, I didn't think that that was sustainable by any means, but I definitely thought that Taiwan Walker is a reputable, reliable number three starter going forward. And then things, as I said before, completely tailed off. And, I mean, the splits don't end there either. It was a big home and away thing as well. Taiwan Walker, I would feel, uh, felt very comfortable at City Field. 15 games started last year at City Field, 3.46 ERA. That's a solid pitcher right there. That's a It's a very good pitcher. In away games, 14 games started, 5.82 ERA. So this that was a year-round issue. That was yes. not just a second half thing. Well, I mean, he's he continued this this trend of I think it's a Dickens. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times at Tale of Two Cities. Getting a little nerdy. But that's kind of been his like thing. That. He he finds his comfort zone and he was uh either Jekyll or Hyde. It was it was extreme. And so there, you want to get more consistency out of him. He looks like he's going to be starting his season later this year. Yep. So hopefully if, if they're in innings thing here that he's shorter, that he could be at that max effort, that really good um, version of himself uh, for longer. Yeah, and the thing that's going to be different this year is that last year we needed Taiwan for the entire season. We were depleted. Taiwan was healthy, and he was making the start every fifth day. Now there's competition breathing down his neck. Two young studs in Tyler McGill and David Peterson who are hungry for that spot that he has right now. It looks like Cookie's got his spot not solidified, but it seems to be safe right now. Taiwan's is on the hot seat. Yeah, I mean, and that's a good thing. You want friendly competition. You want your team teammates to be pushing you. That's that's how you get the that's how you get better. It's it's how you push each other. It's how you grow. It's how you evolve. It's how you get used to competition. That's when your teammates are good. It pushes you and makes you better. So I think it's a great thing that we have this competition. I think it's these two, you know, really good starters and the uh, young guys coming up have a chance to possibly contribute regardless of the situation. Um, but it should be interesting. And it wasn't the entirety of the second half either, which I found really interesting. I only really realized this when I looked a little bit deeper into Taiwan splits. He actually had a really solid month of August, which as most Mets fans remember, was pretty much the death of the 2021 season, that long 13-game uh, West Coast gauntlet that we had to endure. Taiwan had his best month of the second half during that stretch. Five games started, 4.15 ERA, a whip below one, but he lost all five of his starts. So the Mets were just in a bad way, and I think that accentuated Taiwan's performance there. But that just goes to show how dreadful his uh, July and September was towards the end. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember him having that kind of successful run post-All-Star break. I don't remember it because it felt like... Why would you? It, you know? Yeah, because it it felt like he was just a different pitcher and he kept giving up those long balls. But that whole 13-run stretch, the dreaded you know, West Coast trip that I'll, I'll forever remember as uh, the, the, the turning point of our whole season last year. But we're in a brand new season, and we're at the start. And if we get Taiwan Walker of last year's start, then we're going to be in a great position. And it was crazy because Taiwan, during this month of August specifically, was working quality starts while also still giving up all these long balls. He had a start in Philly, six innings, three earned runs, three solo shots. A start against the Dodgers where he gave up a home run, but it went six and two-thirds innings. And I think he had a perfect game stretch in that run as well. Two earned runs against the Giants over six innings, another home run there. So, I mean... If Taiwan Walker can keep the ball in the ballpark, the, I don't. His boundaries are limitless, in my opinion. So you were, you talked about his whip and everything, and that was good in August. But I'm looking at these numbers of August, and it's five innings, four runs, six innings, three runs, six and two thirds, one run. Yep. And then six and four, six and three. Like I see these numbers. There's only one really good start in there. Right. The peripheral numbers, the whip, all that stuff. But it's it's the home runs because he went two home runs. In the first game, three in the second, one in the third, zero in the fourth, and one in the fifth. There's a home run. That is too many home runs. So that's probably why I don't remember it. Right. Because he would get to a point to where he's cruising, and then all of a sudden there's a two-run homer or a three-run homer. Um, so it felt worse than it was by the numbers, but it still wasn't great. So I don't. I didn't remember it quite as well as you did or as fondly. Well, I mean, I remember April and May a lot more. Uh, <laughs> 53 and two-thirds innings pitch between those two months. One home run. 
Again, I think it was that fastball. Yeah. So I think if we can get to that zip on his fastball, wherever it is, and if he doesn't have that zip or that, that ride, we can evaluate that. Whatever the first half spin rate was, if it's not there, don't use that pitch or use it differently. So uh, I think he can be a little bit less stubborn is not the word, or bullheaded. Headstrong? Headstrong. I, I think if he if he takes a deep breath and, and can lean on those analytics a little bit more, and, and you know, I think it'll do him wonders. Should we talk about what is uh, expected? Yes, let's look at the uh, Fangraph steamer projections for Mr. Walker. Stuart, you want to read them off? I'll read them off. So, uh, Steamer's 2022 projections are 28 starts, 154 innings pitched, uh, 20% K rate, 8 percent walk rate uh, and an ERA of 4.62 not ideal not ideal but again not too bad um serviceable I don't see the splits in there between first half and second half which is again telling of his previous season right but I think these projections of 28 games started seems very optimistic and 154 innings pitch seems also right in line with kind of where his career uh, has been so it's it's towards the topper tier of innings pitched and i've said this to you before and i'm topper gonna, tier is that what i just said yeah but no one noticed did you guys notice say no one commented about top it top tier upper tier topper tier top upper <laughs> tier tupperware tier tupperware tier uh what i was gonna say before was that i think that the most important thing for Taiwan Walker next year is consistency. Yes. I want the same pitcher on the bump every fifth day. Be reliable. And if that means that Taiwan Walker is not an all-star in the first half, so be it, honestly. So be it. If you are a 3.8 to 4 ERA pitcher for the entire year for a 25-game started season, I'm taking that to the bank. That is a very confident number five, even number four starter uh, in my rotation for a playoff, maybe even World Series contending rotation. Uh, I'm going to try to do... Uh, a different version of what you're saying. I would love that consistency, and if he's able to do that, but I think at his best, he can be that all-star. And if we can get 20 starts of all-star caliber Taiwan Walker, we can fill the other 30 starts, or the other 10, 15 starts, with a guy that he's not at his best. I think we can be careful with our depth and use those two young guys to come in and fill in it all depends on how it goes if he's cruising you're going to let him cruise if he's if he's average um or at least above average but consistent he's going to have 32 starts right and he deserves it and that's better but if we can have elite taiwan walker and then if he starts to fade off that and becomes reminiscent of the second half version where he's right. giving up the long ball get him out of there let him get back to this peak and then bring them back in. So I think we have the luxury of that with our seven starters. And that is the beauty of the depth of the Mets rotation right yeah. now. Last year, we had to throw out guys like Jared uh, Jared Ikov and Thomas Sapucky when they clearly weren't ready to start games. And Taiwan Walker was a fixture in the rotation that had, there was no question in anybody's mind that he would get removed from the rotation just because we needed him there to eat innings. Now, I, I, I phrased it before as like uh, someone breathing down his neck. But the way that you phrased that kind of enlightened me a little bit. This is These are guys that could aid Taiwan Walker and Absolutely. help him in the long run. Taiwan did make a relief appearance last year. He's capable of doing that. He's done it in the past. If he needs to go to the bullpen and lower that innings limit and get himself ready for later in the season, I think that's a route the Mets take because Tyler McGill has proven he can do it at the big league level, and so has David Peterson. And while they're not in the depth chart of the rotation right now, they're definitely hungry to be there. These are not guys that want to be relievers. They know that they can be starters at the big league level. Uh, I think so too. And and you think about the the need to bridement surgery and the Cookie Carrasco's kind of you know still not sure if he's going to be healthy with what happened to Jacob Degrom last year and his limitations, and then the way Max Scherzer faded last year, um, just on you know that the dead arm and and being tired. They're going to need some more depth, so they're going to get some top tier AAA fill in uh, Jared Eikhoff style. He didn't. I like Jared as a, a pitcher. Good dude, yeah, he's a good guy. He's also like a good, good major league pitcher. He had not any good starts for the Mets. It didn't go his way, and I don't no blame PPP for Jared. Eikhoff. I don't blame the Mets, and especially the Mets fans, for not wanting him back because he didn't perform. But I think he is a very service, serviceable. Jared Eikhoff type. We're going to need one or two of those guys in AAA just for just to fall behind to break glass in case of emergency style. Exactly. And I mean, Taiwan Walker, this is another big year for him because he signed a two year, $17 million deal in 2021. We're in year two now. Uh, There is a third year player option. But if Taiwan Walker balls out this season, 
I would opt out and test the market because as we've seen from the current market of starting pitchers right now, these guys are getting deals because every team needs a starting pitcher. You can never have enough on your team, in my opinion. So if Taiwan goes out and has this great season where he replicates the first half and extends it over a full season, that's going to be huge for him. He can parlay that into a nice deal because he's still a young guy, uh, if I'm recalling correctly. I'm going to check out here. He is... He's 29 right now, so he's going to be 30 next season. He's still got plenty of gas in the tank. Yeah, and he's a big guy. He's 6'4", 235, looks like a tight end out there. Uh, he's your typical, like, old-school 80s look at a guy and say that's a workhorse type. He hasn't shown it yet, but if he can find that that stability, that kind of consistent, you know, consistency isn't just, like, your arm health, it's your body. So if right. this knee surgery helps him out and he feels less pain, his, he's able to repeat his mechanics, and he could be sustainable physically for longer. So uh, I'm, I'm looking for – he could have – he could change the trajectory of his career here if he's that, that pitcher that was a first-half all-star and shows that that's just who I am now. Uh, that can be uh, an amazing turn for him and an amazing turn for the Mets. Oh, you know what time it is? It's over-under time. It's over-under time. And uh, if we look back at the Fangraph's uh, steamer projections, uh, they have him – projected at 154 innings pitched. So last year he had 159, which was 10 off of his grand total of 169 uh, in 2015, which was his highest total. And you mentioned he's only been above that 150 mark three times. I think that was 169, the third, third time 157, career. and 159. Yep. I am going to take an over-under, and I'm going to move it somewhere in there to where it's like, if he has a productive season, he's going to be close to those 150 highs. Yeah. And if he doesn't, uh, it's going to be under that. And so I'm going to set the over-under of innings pitched at 125. Oh. And it's pretty low. So if you think he's going to be healthy and contribute to this team on a high level, it's, you're going to pick the over. If you think that this knee surgery issue is on the low end and you think that competition is – going to push themselves to, to keep him out of the rotation, you can take the under. So I think it's rather low. I'm going to let you choose first. This is a hammer. This is the over. I'm going to hammer, hammer the, the over. over. I think that Taiwan Walker proved that he is not injury prone last season. He had a, t- he had a tough four-year stretch, man. It was, it was tough for him to stay on the field. He dealt with a lot, and I think he really found it in his physicality last year. I think he's going to take the same steps this year, and I think that even if he doesn't start 30 games, he's going to get those innings in for the Mets because they will need him down the stretch. So I'm going to take the over on 125. Mm, I should have said it maybe a little bit higher because I too am going to take the over. I think that he is going to sustain himself. I don't think he's going to reach his career highs. I don't think he's going to break a career high. Let me be more specific. Okay, but I think he's going to be right around that 140 to 150 range. Uh, And those are going to be very effective innings for the New York Mets. So I, too, am going to take the over. All right, here's mine. And this is my first, like, splits-based over-under. So I'm excited for you to hear it. Uh, Taiwan Walker, we know the story from 2021. All-star in the first half, train wreck in the second half. His ERA was over 7 in the second half. And this has kind of been a thing in his career for a little bit. Not always. I think last season was the extremity to end all extremities. But my over-under for Taiwan Walker is, will he have over or under a 4.0 ERA in the second half, which he hasn't done since his last season before this one, throwing over 150 innings pitched? So will he have a 4 ERA? Will he be over or under that mark in the second half? Here's the over. Here's my hammer. I'm going to hammer the wow. over. Wow. Did you just think of that? That was smart. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I copy. That's the the sincerest imitation. Form of, yeah, flattery is imitation. Is that something? A lot like of quippy that. lines. I, I messed that up <laughs> earlier here uh, at the Tops Bun House. John Boy Media, allow please forgive me for that. But uh, I do think he is going to be over. Mm. I think it's a good mark to have. I just it's a tough thing to do. It's a hard pitching is hard. Pitching 150 plus innings is even more difficult. Yeah, and to do it at a at a really 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 productive. I just think the math is a, is is in the favor of the over. So I'm going to take the over here. We're going to double agree here because I'm also okay. going to take the over. I don't know if uh, – I think that Tyler Walker is going to get the bulk of his innings in the first half, just like last season. I think he might tail off again. But if he can just control that long ball, it's going to do him wonders. I think that the Mets – I know you can't really do this, but get him pitching in City Field as much as you can because that's when things are really under control in terms of fly balls for him. I don't think his ERA is going to be seven by any means. Yeah. I think that was a total like catastrophic thing. 
But Tywan Walker, this has been a problem for him his entire career, parlaying his first half into his second half and keeping that stamina up. I don't see any reason why it was it would change, but if it does, it's going to be a big year for Tywan Walker. I, I I'll be honest, I'm nervous about Tywan Walker. Yeah, the 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 knee thing it makes me nervous for him as a whole. Not that he's not going to be a good pitcher, and not that he's not going to be great for the Mets. Uh, it it makes me nervous because missing the first bit of season opens up the window for somebody to step up and take the season by storm. The, we're going to get Wally pipped possibly with Tyler yeah, McGill man. coming in. Uh, David Peterson stepping up, whoever earns that first fifth start, the first start in the fifth spot of the rotation, could run run away with it. And if you're trying to win a World Series and this is the guy that just showed out, you're going to let him go. I'm worried about, that's kind of why I set the over-under at 125, because I think the possibility of somebody taking his spot if he misses an extended period of time to open this season is significant. Um, he's going to get his chance because he deserves it and he's a big leaguer. He's going to get those opportunities. I think he's going to, like I said, I took the over. Um, he's going to get his innings because there's going to be guys that need a spell. But I am right. worried I am worried about opportunity if if he's not healthy to start this year. Well, lucky for you and all of our uh, listeners at home, we will be talking about McGill and Peterson very soon on one of our next PPPs. Might be the next one, might be in the near future. But thank you guys for watching our Taiwan Walker PPP. Taiwan will wish you well in the next season and let's go Mets. Let's go Mets. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening at home. <laughs>